Meanwhile, in the past again. <laughs> Let's see. You're almost done patching up the hole in your window with gaffer t with the gaffer tape, but it's sort of hard to get any work done when people keep pestering you all day. I guess you better get that. Um, I don't know, Seth. I don't know how that works. All right, let's answer our chum. Guard agnostic began pestering turn tech godhead. Hi, Dave. Hey, sup? Not much. Sup with you, bro. <laughs> Good one. It's all right. Being chill. I guess you know how it goes. Hey, Joshua. How's it going? Hello. Happy Friday to you. Hope you're doing well. We made it to the end of the week. Yes, it is Homestuck. We are Homestucking. Let's see. Great. Feeling cool today, Mr. Cool Guy? Oh, man, you know it. So cool. You know shit is ice cold up in here. <laughs> okay. You know shit is ice cold up in here. Shit is wicked bananas, I am telling you. Ha! <laughs> so have you talked to John today? Yeah, we were just talking a little while ago about he sucks at his Silidex. Can you believe he uses stack? That kid is ridiculous. <laughs> Lol. Well, that doesn't sound like much fun. <laughs> what was it you used again? Oh, wait, never mind. And I forgot, whenever we talk about your goofy moduses, I get a migraine. What do you want with John? I want to tell him happy birthday and ask him about his birthday package. Oh yeah, I was being sort of cagey and told him to check the mail because I was wondering if mine came yet. I think it did. Yeah, and I think mine came too. So, uh, I guess you want to know if he likes it or something? No, he will not open it. He will lose it. Oh, oh, wow. Sorry to hear that, I guess. No, it's good actually because he'll find it again later when he really needs it, which of course is why I sent it, to, sent it in the first place. See, like, I never get how you know these things. I don't know. I just know that I know. Hmm, all right. So, so, so Gnostic Garden person is... Hold up. Yeah, Garden Gnostic, rather. So Garden Gnostic, like... Has powers of premonition, perhaps? I don't know. I'm just kind of making a prediction. Oh, you're not going out of the house? Why is, why is that, Josh? Is everything all right? Um, let's see. Hmm, all right. Anyway, I have to go. I have to feed Beck, which is always a bit of an undertaking. Man, if I were you, I would just take that fucking devil beast out behind the woodshed and blow its head off. <laughs> I don't think I could if I tried. Oh, what is Beck? I hope Beck's not a dog. I would hate to think of that happening to a dog. Like, no, we don't want to do that to dogs. Dogs are sweet and adorable. They're all they're all our babies. Especially this one. Isn't that right, Terrible? Isn't that right, Terrible? Yeah, you're such a good girl. That's the part of the stream where I love my dog. Alright. Uh let's see. Yeah. Well, say hi to your granddad for me too, okay? Hey, thanks, Seth. Bits, 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 bits. Ow! Wait. I didn't take damage. Jen took damage. Never mind. I'm not the boss anymore. <laughs> That's right. Boss battle. Um, let's see. Yeah, say hi to your granddad for me too, okay? Yes, I guess an encounter with him is almost certain. It is usually intense. Well, yeah, isn't it always with family? But he sounds like a total badass. Yeah, he totally is. Anyway, gotta go. See ya. Heart. You gotta play video games? That's awesome. Oh, so Beck is a very unique dog? Okay. Oh, speaking of dogs. Tara keeps moving around. Gotta keep puppy cam going. Gotta keep the people happy. Gotta give the people what they want. Which is, I assume, a puppy. Alright, get the phone, Dave. It'll be handy to have your phone on standby, so you won't always have to go back to your computer whenever someone pesters you. This way, you can get text message. No matter where, pe no matter where you are, or what outrageously cool thing you're up to. <laughs> yeah, right, Seth. Old Yeller. So cool. 
Hey, thanks, Jen. Bits, 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 bits. All right. John, pursue adversary into that room. And even meaner while, in the present, sort of. Once again, the slippery antagonist eludes you, only to find more of these unpleasant oily smears. What is up with these oily smears? Good heavens. Someone is pestering you. Both your PDA and computer register the message. This chum will know what to do! What's up, Pester Log? Alright, I'm out of my room now looking for my bro's game. Oh, good. Yeah, there's no sign of Rose yet. I hope she's okay. Well, if she comes back, I'll be ready. You better know what you're talking about, because this could get ugly. I brought, brought my phone, and I also took my awesome katana with me in case things get too hot to handle. And they always do. You mean that cheap piece of shit you have on your wall? F you! It's sharp, and it's awesome, and it's a sword. End of story. Okay, I don't really care. Yeah, it kind of does, Josh. I'm digging it. Okay, I don't really care. I'm in my room again. I really think there's someone else in this house. Like, monsters or something. Howie? <laughs> I wish. Dude, monsters aren't real. That's stupid kid stuff for stupid babies. Maybe. Yeah, you're right. What are you, an idiot? Of course there are monsters in your house. You're in some weird evil monster dimension, so come on. Skepticism is the crutch of cinematic troglodytes. Like... Hey, Mom, Dad, there's a dinosaur or a ghost or whatever in my room. Yeah, right, Junior, go back to bed. Fuck you, Mom and Dad. How many times are we going to watch this trope unfold? It wasn't goddamn funny the first time I saw it. Just once I'd like to see Dad crap his pants when a kid says there's a vampire in his closet. Oh, shit! Everyone in the minivan! <laughs> Be fucking Dad of the Year right there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this is delightful. Okay, okay, stop. What do I do? What do you have? A hammer? Man, so lame. Okay, whatever. You should look into weaponizing your Silidex. My bro is always getting on my case about it, but man, it's not as easy as it sounds. But if you're fighting monsters left and right, you don't have much choice. Hmm. Okay, I guess I can read up on data structures some more. How's it going there? I'm out in the living room. He's usually here, but I don't see him. Might be playing his mind games. He's always pulling his he's always pulling this ninja shit. All I can see is little cow over there, so I guess he can't be far. Ha ha ha, oh god. So lame. What? See, I just don't know why you think it's cool, his ventriloquist his ventriloquist rapping thing. Oh, little cow? No, man. Lil' cow is the shit. That's fine. You're entitled to you are entitled to your opinion. I am just saying that being a white guy who is a rapper with a ventriloquist doll is not cool by any stretch of the imagination or by any definition of word cool, ironic, or otherwise. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, bullshit. Cal is dope. Puppets are awesome. John Egbert blows. The end. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is great. Yeah, more like the opposite of all those things is the thing that is true. I'm gonna go read. Good luck with your bro. Read your book. Stay wary of these foes. Pfft, monsters. Oh my goodness, there is a black thing with a gesture hat. Only retarded babies who poop in their diapers believe in that stuff. Oh dear. Oh good heavens. Oh my. What's about to happen? And there's sound in the next, uh... In the next, uh page here. Youth roll right out the front door. Oh no! Strife! Um... A grieve? What happens if I choose a grieve? Oh my gosh, she's like stabbing her mom with her with her knitting needles. Blotto Perry! Let's try aggressing. Passive? Oh, passive aggress. Gotcha. I see. Empty suicide threat? Oh dear. Good heavens. Abjure. Guardian Guardian Rubik. What? What was that? A beautiful pony! 
Oh goodness. Abstain. Ironic negligence. Auto parrier. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's awesome. Fantastic. That's delightful. These battles are delightful. It looks like Mom has satisfied her S-strife quota for the day. She simply returns to her housework. No point in going out the front door anymore. Might as well head out the back like you originally planned. I think it's her... So I think it's her knitting needle, Seth, because um, cause Rose knits. So I think that's what she was using. Rose, first, be the pony. Second, trample Mom. You can't be the stupid pony, and frankly, you can't imagine why anyone would want to. But you give the pony a begrudging pat on the snout anyway. Her name is Maplehoof. Oh, Maplehoof. <laughs> yeah, Otto Perrier. I thought that was a great pun. That's a delightful pun, and I approve. John, turn around! <laughs> Data Structures for Assholes, Chapter 7. God damn it, why do I even bother? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I like that. The good news. you Finally, finally, your revolting incompetence can be put to use. Instead of accidentally firing a silex full of steak knives into a priceless oil painting on your beloved great- or your beloved great aunt, you can turn that fumbling fury toward one of your foes, such as the ability to grasp painfully simple concepts. The bad news, I'm tired of explaining myself, Horace, to you gibbering fuckwads. In this chapter, I will be phoning it in with the liberal use of diagrams and shitty clip art. Oh. What are you going to do about it? You are going to wriggle your own, in your own, own viscous secretions like the worms you are. That's what. Oh my god, that is, that is hilarious. Oh, wow. Here, learn something for a change. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I am pleased. I am pleased with this chapter of this book. <laughs> hey, Crumpty, how's it going? Happy Friday to you. Hope you're doing well. I hope your week ended on a positive note. So we head into the weekend here. Asshole notes. Purse your lips together to form a stiff pucker. Apply them firmly to my rear end. I now pronounce you man and wife. Oh, gosh. Now get in the kitchen and make my ass some dinner. Oh, goodness. It's getting, it's getting a little sexist there. Oh, but my goodness. <laughs> That's hilarious. Homestuck does have hilarious stuff to read, Josh. It's, I am delighted. You're trying to read, okay? This book is already unpleasant enough as it is without weird voices in your head nagging you to do things. Besides, I thought we already agreed there's no such thing as monsters. Fine, you'll interrupt your reading and turn around, but you don't see what could possibly be so... Oh my god, it's a monster. Oh no, we're going into like the battle screen. You're gonna get McDonald's tomorrow? That sounds delicious, Josh. That sounds delicious. What at McDonald's are you planning to get? Are you going for breakfast? Are you going for lunch? For dinner? All three? Strife! Don't move or the bunny gets it. Oh god. Oh no, the bunny's getting it. Oh, we got the hammer out. Aggrieve! Put the bunny back in the box. Damn it, John. What did you do? John! Why did you fall down? Why did the hammer fall apart? What is... John, what... Why? What did you do? Oh, we can restart it again. I'm gonna do this again so I can, like, kind of see what... Exactly what happened here. Oh, the hammer was just, like, too heavy for me. It just fell down. Okay. Alright. Rose, exit. So, back to Rose. So, John's getting his butt kicked by some weird monster. <clears throat> you leave through the back door. 
Nearby is the transformer which distributes electricity from the underground generator powered by the river flowing beneath your house. The transformer was struck by lightning though, and no longer works. You wonder if your mother has any plans to have it fixed. You guess she'd rather just play her mind games in the dark house like a weird in the dark house like a weirdo. You can see the mausoleum and the portable generator across your backyard. You're almost there. Oh yeah, go for it, Goatmon. Um, I'll have to I'll have to check it out later. But um, yeah, totally drop that link in, and we can check it out uh, at some other point. Let's use the umbrella. Oh, we dropped all of our other things. You regather your items and begin the soggy trek maus mausoleum word. Oh, we have more sound. Doop. Get up, John! This is no time for slumber! Yeah, John, get up. All you did was drop a hammer. You can't be unconscious. Whoa, I can use the arrow keys to walk in the space bar to attack? That is so cool. What? Oh, I'm beating him with a stick. Take that, and that. Oh dear. I lost my stick. I lost my stick. Ah! Also, I can't seem to move anymore. But I can, like, go back, right? There we go. Oh, okay. I guess I guess like when I hit him a lot, it goes to that point. I have to move on. Okay, cool. Oh, did the did the link not uh? Is the link not showing up? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not actually looking at actual Twitch chat. Like I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at OBS and I'm looking at uh, um, Akbot chat as well. But hang on a sec. Let me do this. There we go. I got you good, man. I got you covered. Alright. Forget the W and make haste to the mausoleum. Retrieving the W never even crossed your mind. It's just a stupid magnet. <laughs> hey! Thanks for the bits, Seth! Bits! 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 Ouch. Jen takes 25 damage. Alright. Oh, good heavens. There's a giant forest fire. We we're almost at the mausoleum. Things are looking not great for Rose. John, salvage your weapon and fight on! Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should just leave the music off until, like, John's fight is done. I love how this is, there's, like, a lot happening right now. Fight on, John! Strife! Again! Right, let's go pick this up. Oh, oh, so we're just like launching stuff now. Yay, thanks for the bits, Jen! <laughs> well, that did nothing. Oh dear, that got like launched back at us. Whoa, sweet catch! Whoa, we won! Oh, we got build grist. So much build grist and shale. Oh, is this a good part, Goatmon? Excellent. All right. You said, put the bunny back in 
the box! Now, why wouldn't he put the bunny back in the box? <laughs> the bunny just... The bottom of the box just falls... Just, 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 just falls open. The bunny just, like, falls to the floor. Ralph! Yes! Woo! We won! Xbox One S? Oh, did I, like, miss an announcement about a thing? I must have. Oh, oh, I just saw what Jen said. Gotcha. I forgot to mention that Jesse got a one terabyte Xbox One S. One terabyte? That's a lot. That's a lot of memory. Now exult victory! Now exult victory! Spoils are yours! Echeladder, eh? It's a portmanteau of echelon and ladder. Oh, I could probably turn the music back on here. There we go. Climb to ring juve squirt, eh? Oh, climb to rung juve squirt. Climb to rung plucky tot. Gel viscosity, cash limits. <laughs> oh, good heavens. The amazing victory allows you to scale the first two achievement rungs on your echeladder. You are now a plucky tot with a new with a new feather in your cap to show for it. The echeladder rewards your bold ascent with 125 boon dollars. You waste little time in storing them in your ceramic pork hollow. <laughs> ceramic pork hollow. <laughs> it's just a word for piggy bank. I understand. Oh, I am delighted and I understand. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ceramic pork hollow. <laughs> I love it. That is I'm I'm happy. Additionally, climbing the rungs has boosted your gel viscosity and cash limit. By expanding your cash limit, you've made room for all that nice grist you just collected. You now have 32 fragments of build grist and 10 fragments of shale. What about that card? What card? What card are we talking about? It seems the Shale Imp had allocated the bunny to its strife specifus. Sort of a stupid thing to use for a weapon, but you might as well grab it and stick the bunny in your strife deck while you're at it. It will, at the very least, be safer there. He, Andrew Hussey does have a staggering vocabulary. It's... it's... I'm, I'm really quite pleased by the writing in this. I'm so delighted by it. And I really like the different writing styles and like dialogue styles for all the different characters. Like it really makes like the different characters like pop. Like like Rose's way of talking is so unique and Dave's way of talking is so unique. It's great. I am pleased. Oh goodness Kremti, yes, I'm sorry that you're distressed. The puppy moved. Tara is uh Moving a lot for a dog who is supposedly tired and should be napping. Oh, Tara. You must be very relaxed, girl, because I can smell your fart. Oh, God. Dogs are great, but they have terrible gas. I just thought you all should know that. It was vital for you to know that. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. I, I guess it'll be safer there, Crumpty. I know nothing about data structures or how any of this stuff works, but I just kind of smile and nod. All right. Okay, Strife Specibus. You group the two specify into your Strife portfolio. No self-respecting strifer will be caught dead without one. I don't know what this means, but I'll just, I'll just, I'll just trust that the story knows what it's doing. Gather the scattered bits of your large hammer. <laughs> well, that's right, the hammer fell apart. Oddly enough, it seems breaking the sledgehammer altered the abstratus from hammer kind to handle kind, even going as far as expelling the head of your smaller hammer from your deck to force compliance. You didn't even notice it in the heat of the battle. You grab the sledgehammer handle, expelling the useless Harlequin figurine. Smell cam. You don't. You don't want smell cam. Trust me, you don't want smell cam. Jen has clearly been traumatized. 
Now, repair the hammer. You merge the sledgehammer head with its handle and return it to your strife deck, repairing the hammer kind abstratus in the process. The smaller hammer handle is ejected from the deck, since of course handles of any sort no longer belong in there. Obviously. Fine, now what? Dave is pestering you, but you don't have time to deal with his nonsense right now. Something is amiss in your room, but you can't quite put your finger on it. What is amiss in our room? Well, I haven't noticed anything. Rose, hurry and activate the generator. So I'm noticing that there's also black goop, like, right here. I wonder if there's another... Another monster nearby. You fire up the generator and drag a cord into the mausoleum. It, of course, would be foolish to run the generator inside a confined space. Generator safety is everyone's business. <laughs> Defile tomb? Oh my god. Sorry, Jaspers. Oh my goodness. The cat is buried here and is dressed up in a little suit. Have to make space for the laptop. Oh, poor cat. Oh dear. I don't know how I feel about defiling the tomb of a cat. Oh well. Besides, your final resting place is already a mockery. You should have decomposed years ago under a bed of petunias like a normal cat. Not given to a taxidermist and fitted in a tiny custom tailored suit and then stuffed in a coffin built for infants. Oh goodness. Rose, plug in your laptop. Oh wow. Yeah, what a command. Defile tomb. <laughs> Alright. You plug in your laptop and connect to the internet signal again. Everything predictably falls out of your Silodex, but you're not about to get bent out of shape about it. You have bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Looks like Dave noticed you're back online. He pesters you like clockwork. And there's John. What on earth is he up to now? The door, John! Look at the door! What's, what's up with the door? You're right. Didn't Rose yank the door off its hinges and prop it on your bed? Oh, wait. That did happen, didn't it? Someone or something has put it back and left it slightly ajar. Incredibly alarming! Investigate! What? Hoo 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 hoo! What is this? So outrageous! Oh my goodness. Is this... Is this Jester Nana? Is this Jester Nana that we're about to encounter? Yep. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh goodness. Hello, hello Jester Nana, Nana Jester, whatever your name is. Pastor John. Oh, there you are. John said your house is burning down. Are you on fire yet or what? <laughs> oh my goodness. No, for now I have retired to the safety of a smaller building which is much closer to the forest fire threatening my residence. Oh, well that's a relief. John told me to get John told me to get the game to help you out of Ah, hang on, I'm not reading this correctly. John told me to get the game to help you get out of there, so I'm working on that now. You're working on it? Yeah, my bro's copy. Long story. Hey, uh, don't tell John this, but I think he might have been right about the puppets. They're sort of starting to freak me out a little. You're referring to your brother's collection? I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's cool and all. The semi-ironic puppet thing or whatever. Or semi-semi-ironic. Man, I don't even know. I'm just starting to think some of this shit is going a little far and it's kind of fucked up. I've seen his websites. I like them. <laughs> oh yeah, well, you would. Oh man, I wish little Cal wouldn't look at me like that. With those dead eyes, Jesus. Sometimes when I dream that he's- Sometimes I dream that he's real and he's talking to me and I wake up in a cold sweat and basically flip the fuck out. Interesting. Oh god, why did I just tell you my dream? You're gonna have a field day with that. 
I am currently scrawling notes furiously into one of the many into one of the many psychoanalysis journals I maintain for you. Published papers forthcoming. Because, you know, it's not like either of us have anything better to do at the moment than to evaluate each other's radically debilitating pathologies. Yeah, I'm gonna get moving. Oh, have you heard from John? He's not answering me. He won't answer me either, but I am watching him. I suspect he is preoccupied with the fact that he just had a bucket of water dumped on his head by the ghost of his dead grandmother, who also happens to be dressed like a clown. <laughs> Alright, I'm out. Later. Oh my gosh. Ni nice reaction, Dave. <laughs> like, he doesn't even, like, bat an eye at, at, at the statement of, Oh, he got a bucket of water dumped on him by the ghost of his dead grandmother, who's also dressed like a clown. He's just like, Oh, well, that's funny. Anyway, I'm out. Oh, goodness. Dave must be, like, super well-adjusted or something. Or maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe just, like, doesn't give a shit about things. Interrogate this mad woman! Show, show Sprite Log. Um, Nana? Yes, dear! Wow, you scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> well, I guess it was a really great prank. Good one, Nana. Anyway, are you really my dead Nana? Of course, John. I have come back to help you on your journey through the medium and beyond. I am delighted to see what a fine young man you have turned out to be, just like your father. Okay, I guess I'll have to take your word for it. I don't remember you at all. My dad said I was really young when you died. Hey, speaking of which, do you know where he is? I looked everywhere for him. Hey, Jen! Bits! 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 Jen is... Jen is working hard to not be dethroned. Oh no! Dad is fighting monsters too! Oh, good heavens. What happened to Dad? Your father was kidnapped! Oh no! When you crossed over to the medium, he was apprehended by the very forces of darkness which your presence here has awakened. What? Uh, okay, so what is this? What is the medium you are talking about? It is where we are now. A realm that is a ring of pure void, dividing light and darkness. It turns, uh, it turns in the thick of the, what is this word? It's hard to read because of the color of the font. Of the Incipisphere. Ah. It turns in the thick of the Incipisphere, a place untouched by the flow of time in your universe. Oh, so that's why time is like all wonky right now. Okay. You mean because we are inside a computer or in the game software or something? A computer? Why, what is that, dear? Some newfangled contraption like the horseless auto box car? Well, uh, it's like this machine that. Uh, <laughs> of course I know what a computer is, John. I was just pulling your leg. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. No, John, you're not inside a computer or a software or anything like that. Try not to be so linear, dear. The software that brought you here was merely a mechanism that served as a gateway. Its routines, in a way, serves to invoke this realm's instance, yet it stands independently of any physical machine, and, somewhat paradoxically, always has. I'm not sure I get it, but alright. So what do I actually need to be doing here? I think it would be best if we started with the big picture. Let's go on with the big picture. So curious. So like. So hang on, so like, so the game is like a gateway into this medium place where like time, time does not matter, which explains why Dave is communicating with, Dave is communicating with, well, I don't know if Dave is in the past necessarily, but it explains how like the wayward vagabond is interacting with with uh with john from the future because flow of time doesn't matter so okay cool i understand that piece of the puzzle go on
I said go on. There we go, Flash Player. Ooh, nice curtains. I was waiting for something to happen. <laughs> I forgot there was a sprite log there. Above the medium, beyond the seven gates, residing at the core of the Incyphosphere, is a place known as Skya. Legend holds that Skya exists as a dormant crucible of unlimited creative potential. What does this mean, you ask? I'm afraid my lips are sealed about that, dear. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> But, needless to say, where a realm of such profound importance is concerned, forces of light will forever be charged with its defense, while forces of darkness will just as persistently covet its destruction. Skya, you say? And, as it so happens, at the center of this realm whose fate is in question, these very forces duel on a stage, stuck in eternal stalemate. Yes, they have dueled in this manner forever. That is, until you showed up. Me? I feel like there's like some, some truth bomb that's being dropped as we speak. This does seem like a truth bomb of some kind. <clears throat> yes, you, John! Before your mishap with my ashes, you may recall the sprite's previous incarnation, which resulted from its kernel's hatching. You see, this hatching occurs automatically in response to your arrival. The result is a pair of kernels, one dark, one light, each carrying the information they were prototyped with before the hatch. One goes down into a kingdom entrenched in darkness, the other up to a kingdom basking in light. Each comes to rest in an orb atop a spire, of which there are three others in kind. The four spires are situated above a throne, and these two thrones preside over the two respective sovereign powers. And once the kernels are situated, that is when the game is afoot. The true war begins. Light versus dark, good versus evil. This is a war that the forces of light are always destined to lose, without exception. What? Why are they destined to lose? A quest of futility, then. Wow, really? Then what's the point? That remains for you to find out, dear. For you see, the journey you are about to take is the ultimate riddle. Whoa! For now, your objective is to proceed towards Skya and pass through the first gate situated directly above your house, not even terribly far. The gates will become progressively more difficult to reach, so you had better be prepared to sharpen your adventuring skills. How am I supposed to get up there? You build! Alright, let's put the music back on. Okay, I think I get it now. So, I guess the battle against good and evil is sort of irrelevant? Well, I don't know. 
That all sounds kind of weird, but in any case, we build the house to get to these gates, and then I can save my dad! Yes, John! And then after that, we solve this ultimate riddle thing and save Earth from destruction. Oh no, I'm afraid not! <laughs> Wait, what? What's happening? I don't understand. Your planet is done for, dear. There's nothing you can do about that. Oh. Your purpose is so much more important than saving that silly old planet, though. And that is... <laughs> yes, I will have to agree with the float hag about that. <laughs> so wait, so we can't... We can't save the planet? Like, the planet is doomed? Like... John, you are such a good boy. I know you will succeed. Thanks, Nana. You are a good boy, and good boys deserve treats. Hooray! I am going to bake you some cookies. Mm. <laughs> the hag mentioned cookies. Pursue her. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Earth is like totally screwed? Like there's nothing we can do about that? But then what is our mission that's so much more important? Oh, God damn it! That's just what you need. More baked goods. John, you do not say no to cookies. I command you to get them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You totally abjure the hell out of that idea. You're so busy, busy abjuring, you don't even notice Rose has been trying to pester you this whole time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Rose, hit John in the head with the box to get his attention. <laughs> You give John a swift drubbing in the noggin, but he is undeterred. That is some fit he is throwing. <laughs> Perhaps you will take this spare moment to contemplate the Nana Sprite's strange tale. It may also behoove you to record your thoughts on these developments in your Game Facts walkthrough and journal. It can be hard finding time to update it. In fact, you're not even sure where you found the time to write what's already there. <laughs> True, like, when when did she write the game fact in its current form? Like, when did she have time to do that? Rose has a determined look on her face. Oh, Jaspers. Oh, is that so, Jaspers? And just who do you think you're looking at with that smug grin? The last thing you need is sass from a dead cat. <laughs> it's pretty much all his fault you're in this mess in the first place. Just So he can just button it. John! Cookies! Now! <laughs> You refuse outright! This impudence is insufferable! Go get the cookies! <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, when you put it so politely, how can John decline? I'm loving this interaction of, like, the character in the quote-unquote game with the quote-unquote player of the game, like, putting in commands and then, like, the character just, like, refusing to do it. Like, I'm loving that dynamic right now. It is so cool. I don't understand, like, how the dynamic, how, like, like, what the logistics of the dynamic are, or, like, why, why the Wayward Vagabond, like, has these, supposedly has, like, these powers of, like, controlling the players in the game right now. As that's, like, that's, that's the best, that's the best description I can put on it right now, because I, I mean, they're, I'm sure there are, like, many pieces of the puzzle that I don't have yet, but I'm just loving this relationship between between John and the, uh, and Wayward Vagabond, who's, like, typing in all this stuff. John, you are stupid! You really need to work on your manners. Stupid, stupid, dumb! <laughs> That's not a command. It's nothing. It's stupid. You're stupid. Oh my gosh, she's flipping the bird. He's flipping the bird. For the last time, I command you to get the cookies, boy. Why did the typing just change? Why the caps lock? The cap the caps are like not happening anymore. It's just not going to happen, buddy. Years in the future. Oh, here we go. But not really enough to write home about. An agitated finger slips mid keystroke. Oh, there it is. There it is. The caps lock is off. Exactly what happened. Oh, agitated finger. Let's see what's happening here. So there's something that happened with the Wayward Vagabond. So stuff spilled out. Apparently. Wait, 
Wayward Vagabond, like, oh, it's food. I'm sure the Wayward Vagabond is hungry. Human Etiquette? A book on human etiquette? Oh my gosh. Wait, is the Wayward Vagabond like one of those monster things? Don't, don't answer yes or no to that, but like... That's what I'm suspecting. Just based on its look now. Let's see. The long and short, the medium too. I may have been a bit hasty in advising you not to bother with the prototyping process. If I spared any detail, it was only to optimize your chances of survival. And if you find yourself begrudging the absence of certain instructions, which if followed would have resulted in your demise, then I guess that makes two of us. Otherwise, you're welcome. But the fact appears to be that prototyping the kernel sprite before making your getaway may offer the only opportunity to exercise control over your new environment, a place known as the medium. Also, if prototyped with one or two sufficiently, albeit loosely, humanoid and or sentient elements, living or otherwise, it offers the chance to have all this explained to you by an apparitional guide through whatever sort of cryptic, sketchy doublespeak your choice of prototyping elements engenders. In lieu of this, you may be forced to settle for my clear, thorough explanations and assiduous dissection of raw data. Again, don't mention it. If you have made it to the medium with an with an unmolested vanilla sprite, well, I've already covered the bad news about this missed opportunity, and I will go into this further soon. Though, to what extent this actually is bad news, I'm not sure. I know only the result of my co-player's current configuration, wherein the sprite was prototyped once before the departure and once after, which brings us to the good news, which is that you can still prototype after your departure, and salvage the massively rewarding experience of haggling with an expedition slinging phantom guide, so long as you avoid prototyping with terribly inert items, such as a brass door knocker, and your father's pornography collection. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh good heavens. Actually, that might be interesting. If you are struck by the spirit of such experimentation, please don't hesitate to contact me about it. So, yes, you can enhance your sprite in this way, but doing so after your departure will no longer induce this effect on the medium I alluded to. That can only be accomplished with one or more pre-departure prototypings. In fact, we can extrapolate there are only so many ways to prototype a sprite. Tiers of prototyping in relation to departure. Both before, one before, one after, both after, only one, neither before or after, and none. Those occurring before will affect the medium through the kernel's hatching process, and your guide, i.e. the sprite. Those occurring after will only affect the sprite. The effects this process has on the medium, or more globally, the encyphosphere, the encyphosphere, are still vague to me. They have, they have to do with flavoring the forces you will struggle against, and generally, all forces at odds with each other in this realm. It has given me some insight into the nature of this game, which, again, I derive through extrapolation. We appear to be engaging an instance of a dimension with a highly flexible set parameters, and a series of objectives surrounding an equally flexible mythological framework. This framework seems to begin as a sort of blank template, and involves with the player's actions, and likely further evolves with the addition of more host-client connections, and thus more prototyped kernels. I regret to say I can't be much more specific than that without loosely extrapolating further. There are plenty of questions that have occurred to me, however. Questions concerning the kernel sprite, which I've raised implicitly already, such as, what is the effect of an unprototyped kernel on the medium? Or a doubly prototyped kernel, for that matter? And even more salient are questions about this dimension itself. Do all players worldwide make it to this dimension if they successfully complete their departure? Or is a unique blank instance of the dimension created for each new player? I have no evidence, but instinct tells me it is closer to the latter situation. There is no indication of any other players present in this realm. Alterations in the realm seem singularly centered on the actions of my co-player and myself. If I, had, if I had to stake anything on it, I would guess every separate client-server uh, client pair activates its own fresh copy of an Incyposphere, or a unique session, if you will. But the quantity of players is a further complication, which invites more questions. It seems the game was designed to suit two players most naturally, the server and the client. 
but through a mishap, my co-player and I have slipped out of the obvious tandem arrangement, and the only logical course of action to continue playing is to string a daisy chain of ser server-client connections together, until presumably the chain is complete. Theoretically, we could complete this chain with only one other player, functioning as the server to my client, and the client to my current co-player server, assuming he can recover it. The strange thing is, though, in our instance of this dimension, there are four receptacles for divided kernels, not three. Does this mean we are destined to have a four-player chain? How could the game know such a thing? Perhaps it does, and if this proves to be the case, I trust I will be sufficiently numbed to the realization. Oh, and what's this? What's this strike-through stuff? I'm going to read the strike-through stuff. I can consider nothing about this game surprising at this point, and in fact, from the first moments of play, it managed to deviate so far from my expectations that I completely forgot what my original purpose with it was. I had chances to test some information I obtained on good authority during the prototyping phases, but it completely slipped my mind. Instead, the game's catacombs securing the dark, twisting paths to necromancy were blundered into rather, <laughs> blundered into rather on accident. But perhaps you don't need to know any of this. Rethink organization, lead maybe waist deep, maybe waist deep log <laughs> logger hike log sludge, trim down blah. Nice. She's not finished with this yet. Jeez, cut her some slack. Maybe you could go bug someone else for a while, or maybe at the very least some when else. <laughs> Months in the past, but not many. 